Greetings, everybody. My name is Town Peterson. Uh, I'm making this video in advance just in case there's some problem with a live online uh, transmission tomorrow early morning. Um, colleagues have asked me to give a summary of the uh, in-person training and online digital uh, training materials program that I co-direct. It's called the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum. And I'll say right at the outset of this talk that this program has been made possible by a very generous grant from the JRS Biodiversity Foundation. And that is very much appreciated. And if there's anything uh, good in what I'll show you, it, please, please give them all the credit. Um, Here's the challenge. Biodiversity science, as you all know, is urgent and important. It's um, a, a quick response to uh, massive losses of biodiversity worldwide. Biodiversity informatics, which is to say the science of managing information about biodiversity, it's a pretty new field, and there really are no big, broad syntheses there are no textbooks, and there are no genuinely comprehensive graduate programs yet developed, which is to say the field consists of, of nuclei, local foci of, of expertise and knowledge, but a lot of gaps and a lot of partial messages. And the developing world is particularly challenged in terms of how do you get access to this information? How do you, how do you get into this field? And it's hard in biodiversity informatics because there is no textbook. There is no, the, no synthesis to learn. So I've been involved in, in uh, training programs and the idea of passing on uh, what little bits of expertise I have to other people for some time. Uh, here's the, the uh, web page from a... Uh, ecological niche modeling workshop that we did back in 2006. This was actually the third one, I believe, that was funded by GBIF. Um, and this was this had some things that I'm to this day very happy with. For example, I I managed to assemble quite a uh, dream team of experts who who knew an immense amount about this field as the instructors. And we brought in students from all around the world. And so these, these courses very early on were a lot of fun, and I certainly learned a lot from doing them. So the, the set of uh, lessons that I learned are kind of summarized on this slide. Some of them people may not like. Um, I think we all would agree that in-person training is going to be more effective. Uh, but we have to recognize that in-person training also reaches many, many fewer people. And we often talk about the idea of training the trainers, which is to say the people you train then go out and train uh, chains of other people. And I can, I can see that for very simple messages and very easy capacities. But I think when we deal with, with seriously complex... Um, deep learning, training the trainers can also involve quite a, a, a lot of loss of information and detail in the training process. So if you were trained by the expert, you get a different message than if you were trained by the person who was trained by the person who is the expert. So I've come to value quite a bit the idea that trainees should interface directly with the real global experts in a particular field. And that led me to the the idea of hybridizing these approaches. Um, we developed direct in-person training with the experts, but we also develop um, and promote broad global access via digital videos and materials. So in the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum, we have already held the following courses. Uh, they're in a rough order, uh, Data Capture, Biodiversity Inventory, 
data cleaning, data publishing, biodiversity data analysis, species descriptions, um, using R, QI, G, QGIS, Refine, Estimate S, uh, biostatistics, public health applications, ecological niche modeling, national diagnoses, conservation implementation, and even a course on building biodiversity informatics institutions. And of all of this, really everything is completed except for the conservation implementation course, which will be held later this year, and these smaller modules about how to use R and how to use QGIS and things like that. Here are some of the groups that we've worked with over the years. This was Kenya in, in 2013. Here's South Africa in 2013 also. Ghana in 2014. In fact, I'm guessing that several of our former trainees are perhaps even present at the Tadwig meeting. Um, and then here's Cameroon in 2015. And you can see from the top photo that in the 2015 course, and also in, in the one coming up later this year, we've started to hybridize um, classroom and field experiences as well. So we've, we've been getting a bit more adventurous with these courses as time has gone on. However, that's the in-person part, and we really need to complement that with global distribution and global availability of the materials. So we've developed over the, the past few years a whole series of uh, online resources, shall we say, uh, that present a lot of the content that's available in person as well. So this is our project web page. It's very simple. It has a compendium of the curriculum, which we'll talk about later. It has links to our, our webinar series, our seminar series. Uh, it has links to the courses, and it has links to software and data resources. We also have, for communications, a Facebook group. Um, you can see it has 2,635 members at present. And this has become quite a vibrant um, outlet for news and communications. Uh, essentially, as they come along, they get posted by me and by lots of other people on this page. In parallel, for those who don't like Facebook, we have a Google Plus page. And we also have a YouTube uh, channel where people can uh, access all of the videos uh, that have been produced as part of the curriculum. For a bit of a deeper exchange, we have a scientific journal called Biodiversity Informatics. It is open access and has no uh, author uh, charges for, for publishing. Uh, so this, this journal, I think, is, is quite a useful uh, platform for discussions in, in our field. So with those platforms and with the in-person courses, we've kind of come at least now close to the end of a first generation of this work. And so we've, we've issued the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum version 1.1. The curriculum is basically complete now. Um, the current version consists of more than 500 videos, which cover topics at, that I listed above, ranging all the way from data capture to building institutions. And by the end of this year, the very final modules will be added, and the curriculum will essentially be completely complete. This curriculum is available. It's available online via the project web page, and it's also available in PDF format on biodiversity informatics. That'll be out, I hope, fairly soon. And it's available on USB keys and in DVD formats uh, upon request. Um, we're working on, on broader diffusion of those materials. This is just to give you an idea of the attention and use that the curriculum has gotten. Uh, here's a graph of numbers of views per day um, from the inception of the project to the present. And you can see that now we frequently have days that get above 
200 views. And we also have kind of a, a base level of usage that's in the range of 50 to 100 views. Um, if you look a little bit at a finer temporal scale, you see these peaks. And these peaks coincide with when we do our global online seminar series, which in general is the last Thursday of every month. Um, so via the Facebook page, people find out about these seminars. And you can see, for example, on September 18, we had 241 people watching uh, Robin Engler give a seminar um, on a very interesting development in ecological niche modeling. Uh, and this seminar series is ongoing, so feel free to tune in. Now, getting to the end of this, of this talk, but I just wanted to lay out where we're headed with this. I've had conversations with dozens of our trainees about what, what can a program like the BITC do to really enable careers. And we've talked about a lot of possibilities of a certificate or a diploma. But really, um, what trainee after trainee said to me was, you know, a master's degree. And so we've begun to explore this possibility. Essentially, we want to take advantage of what we've done already, of the curriculum, to provide high-level training to a lot of people. Uh, we want to recognize people's investment in, in use and learning of these materials. Uh, again, we considered a certificate, but there were a lot of concerns about what a certificate means and how, how meaningful that would be as a, as a, uh, a statement of, of a level of learning. So what we're exploring is the idea of a distance-based master's program uh, ba at, based at regional universities. Um, we're aiming for a situation that would have quite low cost involved to keep these this program accessible. Uh, it would have to involve expert review and examination. And being distance-based, we can remove at least a lot of the, the access barriers. So we're still in the development we're hoping that by uh, late 2016, we will be uh, starting one prototype, per perhaps one regional university, uh, as a prototype of the idea of this, the, these master's programs. Uh, so again, the news about that will certainly be shared by YouTube and Google+. So that's essentially the summary that I wanted to give you. Here are some links to uh, these, different, th these different resources that I've, I've mentioned to you. Sorry, some of them are a little bit long, but uh, those are the official links. Um, I'm, I'm very, very sorry that uh, if you're watching this movie, it means I didn't get to talk to you live. Uh, so here's my email at the very beginning of this list of links. And you're very welcome to write to me, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. I hope that you all have a good rest of your day, and uh, I, I'm soon to begin my day. So all the very best, and my apologies that I couldn't be there uh, with you to speak to you in person. And I'm, I guess, now doubly apologetic because um, I guess I couldn't be there live online. Uh, for whatever reason. So forgive me. Uh, I hope that this talk and this program can be of use to you. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.